Hello everyone, this is Grace. It is September the 21st, 2021, and today we're going to be taking a look at the fourth vial of Revelation, and we're also going to take a look at the first four seals. So let's go ahead and get started. Revelation 16, verse 8, And the fourth angel poured out his vial upon the sun, and power was given unto him to scorch men with fire. And men were scorched with great heat, and blasphemed the name of God, which had power, which hath power over these plagues, and they repented not to give him glory. This is pretty this is pretty clear here. There's not a lot of um I don't really have a lot to say about it other than as I mentioned before in the when I did the previous vials I do believe that these are actual physical there's nothing there's no spiritual interpretation needed for these vials um, they are punishments that are coming down upon the people and I think it's obvious here when you see that they're starting to blast from God um, for the plagues it's it's a plague that's upon the people it's a literal play that's poured upon them and we know that there's going to be a lot of stuff going on and um you get to you don't really we didn't really see a big picture of the plagues that were falling um in the sixth seal but here i'm kind of glad that it's obvious because these are literally things that are going to be happen happening also you get do get to see this angel again in revelation 19 and where is it at on here it is and I saw an angel standing on. and I saw an angel standing in the Sun and he cried with a loud voice saying to all the fowls that fly in the midst of heaven come and gather yourselves together unto the supper of the great God that ye may eat the flesh of kings and the flesh of captains and the flesh of mighty men and the flesh of horses and of all them that sit on them and the flesh of all men both free and bond both small and great and then of course you see the beast and the kings and the armies getting gathering together to make war now we have to wait until we get to this part to see if it's in order if it aligns with the four seal but it is the same angel that you can see there um in the sun so why am I doing these seals with <laughs> with the fourth vial? The reason why is because when I did the third when I did the third um, vial, we spoke about the patterns of the sevens, and I didn't realize that I had left the seals out. And it, I guess it's a good thing because I probably wouldn't have done it if I had realized that I had left the seals out because the seals have a slightly different pattern to them. The seals are a satanic representation of the offering system. They are, um, and they, they go whenever, um, they, <laughs> they fall when the Lord has withdrawn himself away from the people. When, once the people have been handed over to, um, the, say, handed over to Satan and the Lord withdraws himself, then Satan implements his own kind of little, you know how he imitates God, right? So this is kind of a representation of the offering system, but it's satanic. <laughs> so of course the first one has to be the burnt offering, because if you recall, in the burnt offering, the burnt offering is symbolic of Jesus' sacrifice, and then you would make your sacrificial offering and then you will put your other burnt offerings on top of that so the first one is the white horse now let's i have heard something different um since i did my video my videos by the way i did those early early in our study i don't know i don't think that those videos are correct i will if i have time to try and find i will try to find some time to go back and look at them and correct them if need be but we're going over it here, so just understand that I, I really struggled with those videos. <laughs> I really did. Um, so um, let's read through the first horse. And I saw and behold a white horse, and he that sat on him had a bow, and a crown was given unto him, and he went forth conquering and to conquer. So the first, hold on. 
we want to do these seals here. I'll go blue. Okay, and third seal. Okay, sorry. I need to keep track of this, and that will help me make sure I'm in the right place. Okay, so the first seal was the, um, he opened that, and the noise of thunder, of course, is one of the beasts that is speaking, but Christians are able to understand what they're saying. Just as when Jesus spoke on the mount, it was thunder, but it was Jesus speaking. And I saw and behold a white horse, and he that sat on him had a, had a bow, and a crown was given unto him, and he went forth conquering and to conquer. So I want to look up this word. I think we covered everything pretty much, but um, I want to look up this word conquering and to conquer because I did hear something about that. That um, it was Jesus who conquered? That is not true. Absolutely not. And if you look at this word, in almost every instance, it is not Jesus who is conquering. Um, the word means to overcome. So let's just look through these verses real quick and see who overcomes. But when, it's, but when it's stronger than he shall come upon him and overcome him, he taketh from him all his armor wherein he trusted and divided the spoils. These things I have spoken unto you, that in me ye might have peace in the world. Ye shall have tribulation, but be of great cheer. I have overcome the world. God forbid, yea, God be true. Yea, let God be true, but every man a liar, as it is written, that thou mightest, might, mightest be justified in thy sayings, and mightest overcome when thou art judged. Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. I write unto you, fathers, because ye have known him that is from the beginning. I write unto you, young men, because ye have overcome the wicked one. I have written in, here we go. I have written unto you, fathers, because ye have known him that fr that is from the beginning. I've written unto you, young men, because ye are strong, and that the word of God abideth in you, and ye have overcome the wicked one. Ye are of God, little children, and ye have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. All of this stuff that that we are not supposed to overcome comes from that false gospel that we preach that all you have to do is believe. No, you don't. You have to prevail over wickedness. You have to prevail over wickedness. And you've been given time to you've been given time to do that. You've been given time to pre what you still I mean, you still have time. You you have time to do that. <laughs> For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world, and this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Who is he that overcometh the world, but he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God? The man overcometh the world, or Satan overcometh the man. All of the, I think all of them, he that hath an ear, let him hear the Spirit's what the Spirit saith unto the churches, he that overcometh will I give to eat of the tree of life. I think this is in all of the churches. That's 2-7. That's the church of Ephesus. 2-11. That's the church of Smyrna. Two seventeen. Pergamos, I didn't highlight any of these and I just realized that, 226, Thyatira, let's read one or two of these, we'll read the first, uh, we'll, we'll read the next ones, so 226, 
Yeah, let's read. We'll go on. Three five. That's the church of Sardis, and let's read these. He that overcometh the same shall be clothed in white raiment, and I will not blot out his name out of the book of life, but I will confess his name before my father and before his angels. Three twelve. That's the church of Philadelphia. Him that overcometh will I make a pillar in the temple of my God, and he shall go no more out, and I will write upon him the name of my God, and the name... We don't need all that. Let's continue on. And 321. Church of Laodicea. All seven churches says that you should overcome wicked, evil, evil, and the world. To him that overcometh, Will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I also overcame and have sat down with my father in his throne? And it goes on. I mean, that's not the end, but we're in a revelation now. So, But overcoming, when um, it says that the white horse overcomes, hold on. This is spiritualism. This is Satan going out and deceiving the masses and conquering their soul. And they if they don't if they don't conquer, if they don't prevail, then they don't make it to heaven. So, and I saw and behold a white horse, and he that sat on him had a bow, and a crown was given unto him, and he went forth conquering and to conquering. That is the satanic equivalent to the um, burnt offering. So Jesus was the sacrificial lamb. This is the satanic equivalent, which is the false spiritualism, which um, which by whatever means deceives the people and takes them away from God. And when he had opened the second seal, I heard the second be say, come and see. And there went out another horse that was red, and power was given him that sat thereon to take peace from the earth, and they, and that they should kill one another. And there was given unto him a great sword. Now, this is going to be the peace offering. Now, I think I originally believed that the fourth seal was the peace offering. I I don't believe that anymore. I think this is the peace offering, and um. It says they're going to kill one another. So they're out there just destroying one another. So um, this, is, of course, is going to be one of the plagues that fall upon the people when there's no unity. That's what we're getting to. A divided house is going to fall, and we are becoming divided. And it, it's going to get far worse. I mean, people are distracted about things that are uncontrollable right now. There's nothing you can do about what's going on in this world. It's going to happen. Doesn't matter how many masks you wear, it doesn't matter. It's it's going to happen. Things have to get far worse. We have to get the more and more divided so that this country can fall and it will fall. It's written. I have no reason to believe that it's not going to fall. It's written. And it will fall. So, but we're not divided enough yet. And there's not enough violence in the world. It has to become violent, far more violent. And you can see the signs if you look for them, but we're not talking about that right now. So we'll just go on to the next seal. And when he had opened the third seal, I heard the third beast say, Come and see. And I beheld, and lo, a black horse. And he that sat on him had a pair of balances in his hand. And I heard a voice in the midst of the four beasts say, A measure of wheat for a penny, and three measures of barley for a penny. And see thou hurt not the oil and the wine. Of course, the oil and the wine are the 144,000 and the martyrs. This is the sin offering. So you have the, um, the burnt offering. You have the... You have this, hold on, you have the peace offering, you have the sin offering, and then the sin offering, by the way, this is the time of the judgment. So you have 
first you have this false spiritualism, which is the first white horse. Then comes the, the violence, the time of war. Then comes the actual judgment where the sins have to be confessed. And of course, you have the 144,000 and the wine and those that are being judged, the, the martyrs. The wine is the martyrs uh, and those that are being judged. And then you come to the fourth seal. And when he had opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth, fourth beast say, Come and see. And I looked, and behold, a pale horse. And his name that sat on him was death, and he followed with him. And power was given unto him, them, over the fourth part of the earth, to kill with sword, and with hunger, and with death, and with the beast of the earth. And when he had opened... Oh, okay, so we'll stop there. So the, this pale means it's a green. It means exalted. Those that are exalted in this in this world, not in the world, because it's the church that goes under judgment first. And the reason why it says the fourth part is because this is the um, the fourth part is the one hundred and forty-four thousand. They are the exalted part of the church. They're the first fruits. But this is not. This of course is not going to be the one hundred and forty-four thousand that are going to come under this judgment. This is, um, these are the exalted in the world. The exalted, the pastors, the, um, the false prophets would fall under here. All of them fall under here because judgment begins at the house of God. We all, we all know that. It starts here. And it's actually such a sure thing that if we look in Ezekiel, I think it's Ezekiel chapter 12. Hold on, I'm looking for it just a moment. Ezekiel 12. He actually gives it as a sign. Here we go. Uh, here we go. Therefore, thou son of man, prepare thee stuff for removing and, re and remove by day in their sight, and thou shalt remove from thy place to another place in their sight. It may be they will consider, though they be a rebellious house. Then shalt thou bring forth thy stuff by day in their sight, as stuff for removing, and thou shalt go forth at even in their sight, as they that go forth into captivity. Dig thou through the wall in their sight, and carry out thereby. In their sight shalt thou bear it upon thy shoulders, and carry it forth in the twilight. Thou shalt cover thy face, that thou see not the ground, for I have set thee for a sign unto the house of Israel. He is a sign that judgment is about to come upon us, because judgment begins at the house of God. And so here you see the judgment coming upon the exalted people first as a sign to everyone else that the end is upon you, that you need to repent and turn to God now. Because you're, you're, you're at your final leg of the race. There's, there's no more time. But you might want to keep in mind that um, that scripture, and of course you know that I'm going to mess it up. I'm not very good at quoting scripture. But there's a scripture that says something like, um, if you can't run with the footmen, how are you going to run during the overflowing of the Jordan or something like that? Now when times are good, this is the time to repent. When it's easier to receive those lessons that you need in order to perfect your character. So if you can't do it now, imagine how hard it's going to be, how, how hard it's going to be if you're doing it during the times when everyone is suffering out there. It's just, you know, now is the time. Anyway, those are the, those are the um, seals. And these four seals run, they run during the ninth, during the um, ninth hour, and the 12th hour except of course they're still going to maintain their patterns where 
you're going to see this go at the first part and then this part happen during the latter part. But um, they're repeated. You get to see these repeated on both. And it may be. No, because the trumpets aren't repeated. But, um, yeah. So I did want to point that out since I've already made the third video and um, show you the difference in the seals. And I think I will leave it at that. I can't think of anything else I have to say. So I will see you in the next video.